Uh, from the outset it was evident this project was complicated by the fact the mill complex had to remain fully operational whilst the demolition and remediation works were carried out. Uh, throughout the tendering process, DDS demolition demonstrated a clear understanding of the project and its specific demands and as a result they were subsequently awarded the contract. As the engineer's representative, I am pleased to say that phase one of the demolition and remediation contract was effectively and efficiently carried out by DDS demolition over an eight month period in what proved to be at times difficult and challenging circumstances. Once we had the um, contract awarded, we had to obviously undertake a methodology how we're gonna undertake the demolition, highlighting any risk, risk, high risk areas, any site constraints we had, where we're going to set up our site welfare. One of the main things we had to do was go and sit down with the client and do a risk review presentation, highlighting all these to their safety advisors, just to make them comfortable that they were happy with the demolition, what we was doing, so they could go and relay this to all their own workforce, so nobody, everybody knew what was going on with the demolition during this contract. The scope of the demolition phase of the project consisted of the demolition of four buildings, being the Carter House, the Cota House, Number One Control Building and the Plant Production Area. One of the main elements of the work was the scaffold that we had to uh, erect around the site, being on the high level internal pipework and the high level external pipework to incorporate the uh, asbestos removal. These works had to be carried out under fully controlled conditions. Once these works were completed, the area was then certified for reoccupation. Due to the high level roofs on all four of the buildings, we utilised a high reach excavator fitted with a rotating shear attachment which cropped the steel trusses at either end and safely lowered them to the ground level for processing. Due to the roofs being a special cement sheets, we had to remove these in a controlled manner. These works had to be undertaken utilising dust suppression systems to prevent fibre release. And at the same time we had to employ a specialist analyst who undertook background monitoring whilst these works were ongoing. I took over the project when the demolition was drawing to its completion um, to then basically oversee all the groundworks and any remediation within the grounds, removing ground structures, removing the ground floor slabs, um, then breaking out the pile caps, cropping the piles um, down to a formation level, uh, removing the made ground, uh, processing the made ground and then placing that back. Within those works also we encountered uh, a known hotspot of contamination which was hydrocarbons. Uh, this was removed um, to a slightly deeper depth through the alluvium as well um, and that was segregated separately. Once the make ground had been placed up to formation level 
we were then instructed to continue on and place a piling platform. This construction was made up using the crushed concrete uh, from the demo arisings and two layers of geogrid. Uh, it was an 8,000 square metre area to cover using 16,000 square metres of geogrid. This was then put in in three la layers and compacted up to a highway specification. Following that there were CBR tests done and also during the compaction works um, sand density tests were taken all achieving in excess of 95%. On every project we undertake, we're aiming to prove ourselves as market leaders. It's only on the more complex and larger projects that we're given the opportunities to do so. Smurfit Kappa was definitely one of these projects, and everybody in the DDS team went above and beyond to deliver a project that the company can be really proud of. 